Okay, so we're back with the GUI for version 2.3. Now, this is pre-release version, so there's still a few bugs and things to sort out. One of the minor issues is this little label problem here where these text, these port names overrun the um, PID window. But anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about that now because I can make most of it go away. So I'm going to select my COM port and click start and I've got comms now to my um, my controller. Now the first thing you notice is that if I start moving stuff around I get it in the graphs but none of this stuff over here is working. And that's a very good reason for that. Um, and that is if you look very carefully here things like the roll is at minus 1000. The mag is at minus 5000. So before any of this is going to ha work, the first thing you do is click on Calibrate Accelerometer, make sure everything's level before you do it, and that'll do its thing, and once that's done, all of my graphics now start working. Hey presto. So when you first fire it up with version 2.3, none of this stuff on the right hand side of the GUI is going to work until you at least calibrate the accelerometer. Okay. I don't have a GPS physically plugged into my controller just for the sake of desk space so ignore this rapidly climbing I2C error count. Okay, that's just because I don't actually have a GPS plugged in but I don't need one for what I'm going to show you here today. Alright, so first thing we're going to do, no, the next thing we're going to do is there's a little arrow here to the right hand side of where it says port com. If I click on that, most of that ugly text goes away. The still the current selected serial port text is there, but I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to go over setting PIDs in this video, I've covered it before, but I will just do one thing here, and that is I'm going to select cab stab, cam stab across OX1 for the sake of my own sanity. Right? Because I want to show you some stuff in a minute. And I need that actually active to show it to you. All right, so pretty much all of this page is normal as per the previous versions. Nothing really has changed. So anyway, so we could do some stuff with various modes. I'm just going to do some stuff here. Switch settings. These are the default switch settings that I do for myself which I've covered again in other videos. Having changed those settings, I'm going to click right. Now these PIDs are the default code PIDs. They won't be the correct default PIDs for uh, any of the Paris boards. I assume that multiplecopter.com will at some stage come up with their own um, uh, files you can download from their website with their default settings. Uh, but until then, um, I would suggest you simply just copy your numbers in from version 2.1. Alright? Um, you... Sorry, version 2.2. .2. You won't need to worry about it at this point in time. I just noticed the version number's reading wrong. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click. Here's where it all becomes very groovy and the new features. Up here we've got some tabs and the first thing I'm going to do is go to settings I'm going to click read and a whole lot of wonderful stuff starts to appear and this is where all the new GUI stuff starts to work. Now one other thing, one thing interesting thing that's happened is this other tab has suddenly appeared having clicked on read which is the servo tab but I'm going to go in that in a second. So here we are in settings. So I can here in the GUI change my minimum throttle setting. I can change my maximum throttle connect setting and the min command. More importantly, I can here change my magnetic declination. Right? So if I decide to go on a holiday and take my um, gear with me and it's a different magnetic declination when I get there I can just change it here using the GUI I don't have to dump a new sketch file cool great don't forget you can write you have to click on write to actually save these settings so 
that's what you get in settings. And when I go to the servo tab, I get a list here of the servos. If I had a tricopter, I'd have the tail servo listed, but I've only got the gimbal selected. So I'm going to click on gimbal. I'm going to click on go live. And what this lets me do is I can set my midpoint for each servo, the minimum and the maximum tilt, and the tilt proportion all from within here. Don't have to do it in code anymore. So if I need to, while live, while live, I can mess with the midpoint setting with my mouse and fine tune my gimbal midpoint. And I can set the maximum tilt I want in either direction live. And I can actually, by picking up the airframe and tilting it while I'm doing this, I can actually see on it where all this is working. I can play with the tilt proportion. And I can reverse it by going to the negative and I can go back into the positive. Or if you've seen my other trick about using the tilt to um, override the brushless gimbal, I can set this at zero. So my pass-through works, but the gimbal doesn't. And it's all wonderful and good, great. Now, the other thing I can do is, if I go back to this, is if I don't select, is I assume, because I haven't played with it, that Ox3 and Ox4 are still overriding it. I haven't played with that yet, I've got to double check. But, looky here. This is going to tell me where the pitch servo is. This is going to tell me where the roll servo is. So I actually can see, and if I go back out of that, I get my motor settings instead. So I can see what the gimbal's actually doing and what the servo for the, t the gimbals are actually doing. And I can play with it all live while I'm doing stuff. And again, all these other settings are live while I'm doing stuff. Don't forget, you have to actually hit right to save those changes or hit save to change those save it's these settings. They don't automatically override, but isn't that cool? I can also save these to a file, which I couldn't do before. Very groovy stuff. Um, so it just gives you all this control over settings that you didn't have before. You'd had to go into code to change this stuff, but now you can actually change all this stuff within the GUI. So really cool that you can actually now fine tune a lot of stuff without even having to get into your sketch file. If you go on holidays, you can change the magnetic declination without going into a sketch file. So once you've basically loaded the parameters of your airframe, the airframe type, what kind of sensors you're using, what board you're using, and selected the options like GPS and cam stab, you never have to actually go back into the sketch file again. You can make all these changes from the GUI, so it's just become all that little bit more user-friendly.